Welcome guys, this is my favorite segment of our show, the Fantasy League. We have our crossover league right here. We have Craig here again. We have a, you know, just to show a little bit of what happened in our week eight, right? So if you pull up the matchups of what happened in our crossover Fantasy League, this one I wanted to forget because I lost really wow. bad. Shout out to Bea uh, for kicking my butt. <laughs> seven to two, man, come on. Explain yours, Craig, because you lost to the worst team. <laughs> again, injuries, man, injuries. It's just, that's all it is. People are slowly coming back. I have Ben Simmons in the ranks, so hopefully he comes up sooner or later. But uh, shout out to my boy Evan, who I lost to. He works at George Brown, where I'm doing Oh, you placement. met him? Yeah, yeah I know. I play pickup with him. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it was funny, actually. We got to give a shout out to PJ, too. Yeah. Because PJ pulled out a 7 2 win on our number one seed, Scott. That was a pretty impressive win. I don't think he what even. What team is he? Uh, he is bench warmer. Bench warmer as well. He okay, pulled a okay. 7 2 win on the first team. Uh, if you pull up the standing right now, pull up the standing, you see Bench Farmer pulled up from 11th place to 8th in one That's week. That's a big jump. That's a big jump. I'm back wow. at the bottom. Right. <laughs> I see, Mark, you're making it. You're breaking you got to respect the money. 12th place, man. What Mark, do you feel like what's going to happen? It's all right. You... Time, man. Time. It's, all, you it's know. like 76ers. Trust Mark, the process. Are you getting nervous? You man, yeah. You're making, you're making a lot of moves I there. lost pretty bad. <laughs> Is your team so, not doing well? Man, you got, you're you picking up a lot of people on your waivers, huh? Well, yeah, we got we to gotta <laughs> give a shout out to Krizzy. P.O.P. hold it down. Coming out of nowhere now. He promised us he was last. It is gonna pull it through, and look at him now in fifth place, on top of me. So I gotta, I gotta get my team back together now. So that's all we have for fantasy. So thank you guys. So week nine, keep in touch. Crossover fantasy league. So let's go back to Jr. Uh, to Jr. And, and Craig to show us. I think his favorite highlights again, right? Yeah, got yeah, another. Last one you showed Craig, was really you got good. Craig, you got a new highlight. So. I guess I do. Yes, I do. I have. Uh, it was the Brogdon dunk, the rookie from uh, Milwaukee dunking on LeBron. This was like right after he crowned Kyrie Irving. But uh, he showed LeBron a bit more respect instead of flexing on him. He just put his head down and walked away, hoping LeBron didn't realize what just happened. So, yeah. So let's check this highlight out. Yeah. The oh, cross. Never mind. Hezzy. Oh, oh never mind. Reverse Go dunk. Don't look. Don't oh, make eyes. Oh, look at that guy. He was like, Don't okay. Make that's, that's, a good, that's a good. That's a good player, man. He didn't really show off that much. He just oh, just a little hezzy. Oh, oh, that's a, that's a nice, that's a nice touch on the rim. You, you know, think LeBron nice knew that he was gonna dunk that? No one knew it was gonna no. happen. No, I think LeBron knew he was gonna. He, he thought he was, he was gonna good. block. I that. think he was just gonna try to do a reverse layup. I thought he was just gonna lay that's it up. Really, that was a really nasty dunk, to be honest. That's a God. nasty dunk. Oh, a reverse oh slam God. on LeBron too. Yeah. yeah, man. So that highlight was was pretty amazing. That was a really nasty dunk, honestly. Just coming from a rookie, that's mm -hmm. pretty. Uh, and like he didn't know that was LeBron. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it's coming to the New Year's, man. 2016 is done. That's it. You know, we had a lot of good stuff the past year. I know yeah. we we've talked about you know the past few months about end of the season, a new season, a lot of stuff. But like, what, Craig? What do you think? What was your best memory of the NBA season from best memory last season and the start of the season for like throughout the whole 2016 year? I'll go with uh, the young guns coming up, man. You have yeah. like all of uh, you have Minnesota Timberwolves. You got Wiggins over there, yeah. and then you got 76ers. The process, yeah. uh, Joel Embiid, they're killing it. Right. Just seeing that, that's the future because like this is a whole era of LeBron's 2003 just like getting to the end of their careers. Yeah. And now you have like a whole new era coming in, so that's right. going to be exciting for the next few years. Yeah. What, what I've think? been more uh, impressed about is the fact that a lot of people have talked about the end of the era for the bigs, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you realize the whole crap. No, it's not the end of the era for yeah, the bigs. It's not really. It's just, yeah. Bigs are hybrids, though, man. This, scary. These are like new types of bigs coming into the NBA you now, showing us what we've been looking for, or what kind mm -hmm. of was trending for all the bigs, because... It kind of started when you find out, uh, I think it started with uh, Dwight Howard with that pick and roll big guy. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, a lot of bigs become stretch fours, like when Mehmet Okor, uh, Ryan Anderson back in you know his Orlando yeah. days, uh, Bargnani if he, when he was actually good. Yeah. Yeah. And like I think it trended from that when we started getting actual elite bigs that can stretch the floor, put the ball in the basket, and still play that big man kind of role where when Anthony Davis was drafted, uh, it went on with Cat being drafted. Like, you've seen this kind of bigs that are just so agile and versatile, right? right? And I mean, mm -hmm. like, wow, a, a year for, like, retirements, too. Tim Duncan's gone. Um, a lot of Kobe Bryant uh, is Hall gone. of Famers were gone. Yeah. And Hall of Famers were inducted, too. Yeah. Alan Iverson, Ke Kevin Alan, Garnett. Everyone. Alan who Iverson was like, inducted. Yeah, who did you feel like was the most uh, will-be-missed, like, or who did you feel like 
it was too good to you know to come to an end. Who who of all the players that kind of retired this year felt like? Because there was a lot of honestly, Hall of Famers. You would you would say Kobe Bryant because he he had a lot of fans. Yeah. Uh, the, the comparison between him and Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan's a quiet guy. Mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant's a more uh, in the limelight. He's yeah. still an yeah. expressive guy. He still like lets his game do the talking. But then again, he has that huge ego on him, yeah. which people do I, like kind of admire. Yeah. I mean, he did drop sixty points in the last game. Yeah. Had a whole ceremony about it. Yeah. When Tim Duncan re- re- retired, he retired during a like when there were, all the news was about a golf tournament, mm-hmm. and then his retirement ceremony, his jersey retirement. Not many people watched it just because in in America there was a, f- a, a football game a f- Sunday night which everyone was watching. I didn't feel like it was that much, not in terms of uh, the football game or anything. It would felt so that his retirement was and his announcement and the induct uh, and the uh, the show that they pro- like the halftime show and the sh- speech that they had for him. Mm-hmm. It fit exactly what it his was personality was exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. felt like a Tim Duncan type of. You know, exit. It felt like a Tim Duncan kind of introduction to his retirement, mm-hmm. right? You know. Um, well, how about you, Craig? Who did you feel like of uh, all the players? Well, Kevin Garnett, man, that guy was a beast. Exactly. Yeah, he set up. He set up the whole mentality of a big being able to play mid range. Exactly. Like he shaped who Chris Bosh was. Yeah. Essentially. Exactly. He he didn't have the mentality as Kevin Garnett, but like he made that reign of a bigs being able to stretch on the floor a bit more. But if you think about it, Kim Garnett was a really good. He was a really he did good everything. player. He, did, he was a really good player. He did player. everything. He did a lot of things, and you know, he showed us that he, uh, people doubted him when he came to the NBA. Yeah. He was skinny when he was playing at Minnesota too. He was a yep. skinny, but he carried the Minnesota. He put Minnesota on the map, right? Kind of like what a Chris Ba and Vince Carter did with Toronto, mm-hmm. right? He he put him on the map, and the fact that he brought and and he thrived in. Minnesota and when he was traded to the, you know, Celtics, right? That was the first big three team, man. Exactly. That's right. where it all started. Yeah. Uh, what did you feel like his best, uh, Kevin of Kevin Garnett? Did you feel like it was in Minnesota or when he was in Celtics? I would say Minnesota, man. Yeah. That that was when he he thrived. That was when him and Tim Duncan were the two best bigs out west. Mm-hmm. That's when he he had a did he have MVP? Uh, almost an MVP season. Like yeah. he was close to it. He killed it, man. He was. Yeah. He just changed the game watching yeah, him. Yeah, he's Latrell an MVP Spiro. caliber player. Yeah. And what he did Always. at Boston was pretty but much it, amazing. It felt to me that the real Kevin Garnett really, the more mature and the more impactful player of a Kevin Garnett mm-hmm. was, was, was when he was at Boston because he, they had the, he they gave had all them the pieces, that, right? Yeah, he yeah. gave them that defensive identity mm-hmm. and they gave him, he gave them the, the personnel and the attitude that they needed to kind of become championship contender. <laughs>